because it seems far away from urban pollution. But it actually has the highest ozone levels in the country. It also has a lot of athletic kids. What we studied was the children's activity patterns, and we categorized children into how many sports they played. And we know children uh, during these ages of school years often will be on a soccer team and a basketball team and t-ball or baseball or something like this. So we, we looked at children who played uh, no sports or played a couple sports and then those that played three or more sports. And the three or more sports kids, you can imagine, are the ones that are going to be outdoors the most time and breathing uh, outdoor levels of air pollution at the highest rates and ventilating the highest and, and so perhaps would be the most exposed children. And it turned out that the kids who play three or more sports and lived in our highest ozone communities had about a threefold increased risk of developing new asthma. By epidemiological standards that's a very high risk. I would say half of her high school team had asthma. The coach, he said his pockets were so full because he would hold all their inhalers. And he didn't know whose was whose and they'd all have to write their names on them. It's very hard to watch her struggling, knowing how much she wants to be in there playing, and then, but she can't breathe. Tony Taylor spent two years in Illinois with her three older kids and, to her disbelief, they were virtually asthma-free. It was almost non-existent. It was literally almost non-existent. And in winter, our asthma was so good we could sleep with the winter window open and all the snow and stuff. And we wouldn't have asthma attacks there. It's the air is much cleaner. It's like not as thick as out here. It's less pollution. When we got back here, they went back on their steroid, plus the inhaler. And once they got the coal, it all just, it just started right back up. It was just like they fell right back into the same cycle of, you know, they get a little cough, a little sniffle, a sneeze, and there goes their breathing right out the door. So we've been interested in whether the air pollution effects that we see, especially on lung function, are reversible, meaning that if you leave a, a high air pollution community, will your lungs revert uh, back to what they would have been had you not been breathing high air pollution? And uh, can you reverse any, any deficits that may have occurred? The scientists followed children in the study who moved from Southern California to other less polluted communities. What they found is that lung function growth improved in these children. That also means that if the air got better in Southern California, children's health would get better too. The study shows that today's air pollution levels are adversely affecting our children's health. There are relationships to asthma and lung disease and absence from school. It clearly shows we have to do more to clean our environment. The Federal Environmental Protection Agency is charged with regulating the levels of pollutants in the air. California is the only state allowed to set its own air pollution standards, and those set by the California Air Resources Board are the strictest in the nation. In spite of this, the Children's Health Study has found notable health effects in Southern California's young people. We see what's called a kind of a linear dose-response relationship, meaning the higher the pollution, the higher the risk of the symptoms. So what it says, I think, to a regulator is the lower they make pollution uh, levels, uh, the better off we will all be. The Los Angeles area has undergone big improvements in its air quality in the last few decades. This is L.A. in the 1970s, when there were typically hundreds of smog alerts each year. This is L.A. today. Now we rarely have any smog alerts. We've made progress. But there are still more than 100 unhealthy air days a year when the state ozone standard is exceeded. Certain pollutants remain high, and it could get worse. Development in Los Angeles is on the rise. The population keeps growing. The ports of L.A. and Long Beach are expanding. There is talk of adding lanes to busy freeways to accommodate the growing number of trucks. And there's a push toward building an inland port 50 miles east of Los Angeles, the area with the nation's highest particulate pollution. If we stick to the current regulations, we will see levels go up in future years. So if we can reduce what's emitted, uh, reduce the toxicity of what's emitted out of the tailpipe, reduce the uh, diesel exhaust particles that are being emitted by, by trucks, um, that will serve to lower almost all the levels of all of these pollutants. The California Air Resources Board has a new plan to dramatically reduce diesel emissions by the year 2010. 
The board has also just issued a new, stricter standard for particulate matter, tiny particles that can get deep into your lungs. New monitoring by the board found very high levels of dangerous particles in an East Los Angeles school that is right next to several freeways. In fact, concern about the health implications of heavy truck and car traffic is leading the Children's Health Study researchers to investigate whether going to school near a busy road or living near a freeway can lead to respiratory problems. The Children's Health Study will continue following these children to see what happens to their health and lung function after they graduate from high school and reach their 20s. The researchers want to determine if the deficits these kids experienced in their childhood will persist. And the researchers don't want to stop there. They hope to follow this group for decades. How will AIB in fact use these results? It's great to fund a study, but how will they be used? I think they will be used right away to assess uh, the research base to look at the health impacts of children to see in fact whether our regulations are protective of health and if not then how do we strengthen those? We could be pushing hard for more public transportation, uh, more incentives to produce uh, less polluting vehicles, uh, more awareness on the public that uh, some of the vehicles that they're purchasing are are polluting vehicles. We need to start putting together a plan that's going to reduce the levels we already have and to prevent development in those types of facilities that will exacerbate the problem even more. The study's results have already led to a temporary ban on the building of new warehouses like these in the Mira Loma area. The Children's Health Study has taken disbelievers that didn't feel that air pollution really affected our children and turn them into believers about the need to move forward with air pollution controls. It is truly a landmark study and provides a sound foundation for our planning and regulatory programs. These type of results can be directly linked to some of the regulatory action here and nationally and internationally to make sure that we're trying to protect public health. I think my fear of what will happen if we don't change what we're doing. As someone who has raised two boys with asthma, who knows what it is like to go through a night time with my husband and I trading times of sleep because we were listening for our children's breathing, knowing that at some point we'd have to take them to the doctor. That uh, has taught me real well what, what pollution does to people. And I think if we don't change that, there's going to be more and more parents who go through that experience, who um, know what it is like to have to rush their child to the doctor uh, in a life and death situation. And I don't think there is a person alive who wants to live their life that way. You can't even begin to imagine not being able to breathe air, but what if you breathe air that's damaging? I mean, that's just a scary, scary thought. Um, that would be my fear, not being able to at least take good deep breaths of air, clean air.